good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Bradley United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Steve McPeak. I'm the pastor here, and if you're worshiping with us for the first time, I'd like to say welcome and glad to have you with us this morning. You all look so good in your red shirts this morning on this Pentecost Sunday. It's awesome to see so much red, and uh, we'll just see how the Holy Spirit moves today. Yes. Amen. Um, I just would like to say that we, next week we are going to be celebrating the graduates for this year, uh, for 2023. And so if you have a graduate uh, that is uh, someone that's graduating this year, just let the office know so we can put them on our list of graduates. And we will just recognize all of our graduates next Sunday um, and uh, pray with them and over them and ask God to bless them as they move forward in their life uh, journey with Christ. And, what they're going to do next in life. So uh, we'll do that next Sunday. Um, also, <clears throat> we continue to do our, our Breakthrough Prayer Initiative. This is a, a congregation that believes in prayer, and so we are focusing on prayer. Uh, it's one of our core values, and we uh, want to invite you to pray with us as a congregation because there's power in numbers. And so the more we have praying, I believe God just can't help but do something spectacular and mighty in our presence. And so uh, we invite you to pray with us. If you do not have the breakthrough prayer, uh, there are cards available for you at the tables at each of these entrances here. Uh, just go pick one up and take that home with you. We pray that at 945 a.m. and 945 p.m. And so uh, and we start out our worship service praying that prayer. And you'll see that there are some candles lit over here that represent a breakthrough prayer where somebody has had a breakthrough um, and where God has answered a prayer in their life. And I do believe we are going to have uh, someone share a breakthrough prayer experience with us this morning. If she will come forward, we'll do that now before we pray our break breakthrough prayer. Um, you have a microphone. This way the people watching online can hear you say who you are <laughs> should be it's yeah That's a celebration. That's a breakthrough. I tell you, going a year to the wound clinic is not fun. So, um, 
thank you all for praying, and, and we know that God answers prayers. So, uh, if you will, please stand at this time. Um, oh, also, there's pew pads there in the pews. We need you to sign in once or twice, if you will, because uh, we're kind of low on numbers. So, <laughs> No, just sign in so we have a record you're being with us this morning. And those of you that are online in the comments section, there's a place for you to click on that will take you to a place where you also can sign in uh, a pew pad. And so we know that you're watching with us today. So, um, Thank you. So let's stand and let's say our, our uh, breakthrough prayer or pray our breakthrough prayer together. Almighty God, may your preferred will break through, usher in and accomplish through us your new hopes, dreams, and possibilities, both in the life of our church and in our own lives. We surrender our wills for yours in order to fully follow you. Empower us to always answer, yes, Lord, send me. Amen. You may see <laughs> Today is Pentecost Sunday the fulfillment of Christ's promise of the Holy Spirit takes place during the Jewish Harvest Festival, Pentecost, which means 50th, and is celebrated on the 50th day after Passover. People came from across the known world to bring gifts and offerings before the Lord at the temple in Jerusalem. It is the day the disciples and close followers of Jesus were gathered together in the upper room waiting for the gift he had promised. These first followers of Jesus Christ, his mother and siblings, were given the blessed gift of the Holy Spirit. They encountered God intimately and with joy. We gather together this morning to worship the Lord, our God, and to bring our gifts and offerings. We come expecting to encounter the holy and resurrected Christ in our midst. We too are given the Holy Spirit to continue the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ in the world today. Let us pray. We thank you, God of grace and power, for the many blessings we have received from your hand. We thank you for the beauty and complexity of our world. We thank you for the many different peoples, traditions, and cultures that you have fashioned. Grant that we may honor and respect our diverse gifts and find our deeper unity in your love as revealed in Jesus Christ. May your renewing spirit continue to call, gather, and enlighten us as we seek to serve your good purposes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
be seated. All right, Cameron, you coming today? Look at them, they're matching. Good morning. So tell me, how can we make these veins move on this? Wind. Wind, okay, show me. Yeah. <laughs> you got tissue. <laughs> Somebody got a tissue. We need a tissue. You go ahead and blow it on it. There you go. Blow it on. Okay. So, um, you know, it's the air or the, the wind that blows. His, his nose is running. <laughs> you want to blow it? Like the wind? <coughs> had a little emergency we had to take care of. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know that uh, whether it is breath or wind, and it's a very important and powerful thing, even though it is invisible to us, it still moves the pinwheel. It still moves and has power. And so there are huge wind farms across the country that have giant windmills on them. And these windmills take the power of the wind and they turn it into electricity. Did you know that? Have you seen a big windmill before? Yeah, they're big, aren't they? Yeah. Well, can you tell me any stories of wind power in the Bible? What about Pentecost? Today is Pentecost. And so when this is when the Holy Spirit came, like the rush of a violent wind, and filled the followers of Jesus with new power, and this wind-like power gave them the ability to share the story of Jesus with others with confidence and enthusiasm. And the power of the Spirit is blowing through the church today. And it's seen, it is seen wherever and whenever someone serves Jesus with talent and ex excitement and with energy. Yeah. So. There you go. There you go. Can you see the power of the Spirit? There you go. In <laughs> I think they like this. Can you see the power of the Spirit in, in anyone in the church? Maybe your teacher, your Sunday school teacher. Yeah. Maybe the usher. Maybe the preacher. Maybe. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, what about uh, uh, teacher. the teacher? Yeah, and, or the, or singers too. You know, the musicians, the choir, the handbells. Yeah, spirit moves and, and empowers them too. So, the spirit is always moving, and that any of us can be surprised by its power today. So we can always be surprised by its power because God's spirit is. So, uh, before you go back to your seat, I want to give you a, a chance. I got you a gift today, and I was really expecting more kids. But, would you like to pick one of these to take with you? And you can put these in your yard, or if you want this one I have, you can have it too. It, it, it's, a, it's an option. You want to pull it? Pull that out. There you go. Do you like any of those? Do you like that one? Cool. There, you can take those and put those in your yard and watch the wind move those and power those. And you think about the Holy Spirit. Do you want one too? <laughs> there you go. Okay. So let's pray before we go. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that you have poured out upon us that gives us power to go out and witness for you and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. 
And, it's, and we just thank you for this wonderful gift that you have given to us that's always with us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Okay. Thank you. You may go. You're welcome. Please stand as you're comfortable for the reading of our lesson today. Our gospel lesson comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, starting with verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men dream dreams. <coughs> Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.
You know, the structure will be big, as tall as the Eiffel Tower, and wide, stretching the length of some of the world's largest cruise ships, built as an enormous grid. It will contain 126 wind turbines. It will float on a platform anchored to the ocean floor using the same technology employed by the oil and gas companies. They will call it wind catcher. The Norwegian company is developing this system to generate electricity from wind power. Fast Company Magazine reports that when it comes or becomes operational next year, it could deliver five times the annual energy of the world's largest single turbine. That's because the system is three times taller than the average turbine, exposing the blades to, wind, to higher wind speeds. Imagine 126 turbines spinning in an enormous grid. The wind catcher blades will be smaller than those on a typical windmill, which will enable them to spin faster. And the position of the grid in deep water will enable it to catch the strongest winds. Numbers, size, location, put these three elements together and you have a single structure that will generate enough electricity to run 80,000 European Homes. That's a lot of power. Yeah. Well, Windcatcher is still on the drawing boards and it hasn't been completed yet, and, and there's still some things that they're still working out. But that's going to be a lot of power to run a lot of homes. On the day of Pentecost, the 12 apostles were gathered in Jerusalem for a harvest festival called Pentecost, meaning, you know, the 50th day. For a harvest, uh, for the 50th day of the celebration of Passover. So after Passover, they gathered 50 days later to celebrate the first harvest of the year. Jews from around the Mediterranean region were gathered to celebrate this festival in Jerusalem, including Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, along with residents of a dozen other regions mentioned in our scripture this morning. The 12 apostles were sitting in a house in Jerusalem, probably feeling uncertain about what to do next. They were kind of uncertain about the, the future and where do we go from here? They had just visited with Jesus. Jesus had just come back from he was resurrected and, and he, he hung out with the disciples. He ate some fish on the Sea of Galilee. He, you know, he walked to Emmaus with a couple of disciples and, and, and had a chat with them. And, and then he gathered with, it says, over 500 people had, had saw him. But then last week, you know, about six days earlier, Jesus was lifted up. And he disappeared in a cloud. And he was no longer there. They couldn't see Jesus anymore. And so they were feeling kind of, you know, down and out. What, what do we do next? What happens? It's kind of like how you feel after the death of a loved one. You know, after a horrible accident that you've been in. You know, your car is gone. And it's like, okay, you just take a moment and you put your head down. And you say, okay, what's next? Where do I go from here? This is kind of how the disciples were feeling on the day of Pentecost. So now, what are they supposed to do? And suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting, the scripture says. This wind was as fast as the air that rushes at high altitudes and as strong as the breeze that blows over the deep ocean waters. But this was not a hurricane. This wasn't some freak storm. No, this power came from God. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them, the Scripture says. Hmm. 
The apostles became wind catchers, powered by the Holy Spirit. They were effective because their numbers were strong. There were 12 of them, plus the women and the children and the others that were there in the upper room with them that day. It wasn't just one of them all alone. So many of God's previous power people have been individuals, you know, like Moses, John the Baptist, Mary, Jesus. <laughs> but now, God was working through a community just like the windcatcher employs an array of turbans. The apostles were also the right size. They were small. They were not the big shots of the religious people. They were not big shots in politics or economics. People who made an impression on others with their insights or influence. No. In fact, when they began to speak in other languages, the God-fearing people, the Jews from other nations, were utterly amazed. <laughs> they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? You know, these people are uneducated. They're in the boondocks. They're, they're in the backwaters. And here they are speaking foreign languages, languages that we understand. No one expected a group from Galilee to master all the diverse languages of the world. You know the old joke, you know, what do you call a person that speaks three languages? Trilingual. What do you speak? call somebody that speaks two languages bilingual who do you what do you call a person or what do you call a person that speaks one language american because we don't know more than one language most of us and here we are what would happen if we began to speak other languages that people could understand The same was true for the Galileans. They were not multilingual until the day of Pentecost. The apostles were also in the right place, Jerusalem. They were gathered for a religious festival, which was good, a good place to be as they showed their devotion to God. But their position in Jerusalem also gave them access to God-fearing people. There were people from all over the world that were gathered together in this one spot where God burst forth the gift of the Holy Spirit. So they were there to experience that. And then they took that experience back home with them to share with others, to, to, to share what they had witnessed. You know, God doesn't call us to, to, to share what we don't know about or what we haven't witnessed. That's what the breakthrough prayer is about. We're just sharing what God has done in our lives. What we've experienced, what we know to be true to us, that God has broken through in powerful ways in, in our lives and answered prayers. And so, Peter was, uh, uh, or, or the, the, the people didn't hesitate to declare the wonders of God in a, a variety of languages and Peter was not reluctant to raise his voice and address the crowd, saying, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. On Pentecost, the apostles discovered the secret to spiritual power. Right numbers, right size, right place. And we can employ that power today as well. We benefit from numbers just as the first apostles did. Now we need to be in community with one another in our faith. And Christian commitment is, is going to grow when we're together, when we're praying for one another, when we're encouraging one another, when we're learning together. This means we put a focus on gathering for worship and Bible study and working together in ministry and mission in our communities. And the first mention of the Greek word ecclesia in the Bible is found in the Gospel of Matthew. And it is translated church. What the word literally means, though, is gathering. 
and it comes from the ancient Greek assembly of citizens in a city-state that would gather together. Ecclesia. Now, the first word that, the, uh, this was also used in Antioch, and this, in Antioch it was the first time that the Ecclesia was called, that people that gathered together were called Christian. Now we need to pray for wherever those trucks are going, don't we? Yeah. Lord, be with the firefighters and the people they're going to. Amen. Well, Jesus is with us when we are gathered together in community as well. Just as he promised us in Matthew, saying, For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. I think I heard that already once this morning. Where two or three are gathered in my name, in Christ's name, there I will be also. That's a promise we can depend upon. When we assembly, uh, you know, um, I just want to share a brief illustration about a, a minister back in the 1800s when he went to go visit on a parishioner who had stopped coming to church. And he goes to the man's house and, and, and he knocks on the door and the parishioner sees the minister and he kind of has an idea of why he's there. And he lets him in and he comes in and they go and they sit down in front of the fireplace and as they are sitting there, neither one of them says a word. And the preacher takes the, the fire poker and he, he goes and he pulls away one of the hot embers from the, the pile of embers that are there. And they're sitting there watching it and it's on fire at first. There's flames and it's red and, and they watch it as it dimly goes cold. And then the, the pastor, the, the preacher, takes his, picks up that coal and he puts it back in the fire and after a while they sit there and they, they see it catch fire again go burst into flame you know and turn red hot and then after a few minutes the minister gets up and he walks to the door and the, the man walks behind him opens the door and as the pastor is leaving he says thank you pastor for that fiery sermon <laughs> I'll see you next Sunday. We're better together. We go cold if we're not. We lose our fire. We lose our passion. We lose our flame when we're by ourselves. And that's why it's important for us to gather here at church together, ecclesia. Assemblies are also needed for effective ministry and mission. Individuals can have brilliant and creative ideas, but implementation requires a team. Far too often, individuals pursue ministry ideas on their own only to become frustrated when they cannot achieve their dreams. And for many, or for any effort to be successful, at least five people have to be involved, have to be on a team. They must commit themselves to it. So we work in teams. We are a team working together for the same reason, for the same purpose, for the same mission. The mission of our church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. How are we doing with our mission? Are we fulfilling our mission? Are we failing our mission? Are we creating disciples? that are changing the world, that are being transformed? Is there something in the water, as the <laughs> song says? There was something in that water that changed that person. Well, as Christians, we also need to be the right size. This has nothing to do with the height or the weight of the individuals, okay? Nor does it align with the number of people in our congregation. Instead, Christians need to be small enough to catch the wind of the Holy Spirit and then act boldly in the world. This is similar to the wind catcher system in which small turbines spin quickly in high wind. Look at the Apostle Peter in the book of Acts. He did not see himself as a big shot or a spiritual superstar. In fact, he had denied Jesus three times when Jesus was arrested. He wasn't a big shot. He was just willing to 
follow Jesus. Peter had no special status in the religious, political, or financial communities in Jerusalem. He was exactly the right size to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And although he was small in the eyes of the world, he was big enough to speak the truth. He said, these men are not drunk, as you suppose. He said to the crowd, they had assumed that the words of the apostles were the babblings of people who were feeling a little tipsy. And he says, no, it's too early in the morning for this. They have something better than wine. They have the Holy Spirit. They have God's Spirit that lives and dwells in them. God has poured out His Spirit upon us who have gathered here today so that we might be empowered to go out into the world and share with others about Jesus Christ. (laughs) Peter says, no, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Peter was just the right size to do what God wanted him to do. Connect the gift of the Holy Spirit to the prophecy of Joel and to share this news with the people of Jerusalem. He concluded by assuring them that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. If you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. That's the promise. So if you're unsure this morning whether or not you're saved, right there it is. Call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. And don't let anybody tell you you're not. Because there's power in that. Just like that's the Spirit of God that will enter into your life right then. Remember that. Our challenge is to Make sure that we are the right size for ministry and mission. You may be a powerful executive officer in a multi-million dollar company, corporation. But you can be the right size for serving a meal in a homeless shelter. You may be an influential attorney, but you can be the right size for teaching a Bible study. You may be an elementary school student, you know. But you can still be the right size for singing in the children's choir. All that matters is that you be the right size for discipleship. That you are willing to be used by God. That you don't think of yourself mightier than the person next to you. To say, Lord, here I am. Send me. That's it. The final secret to spiritual power is place. This means being in the right place at the right time. Just as the apostles were in the right place, Jerusalem, at the right time, the day of Pentecost. For many of us, there will be places that are the right spot for us. Home, school, work, neighborhood, gym, church. But like the wind catcher, We need to position ourselves correctly to catch the wind. Sometimes we need to leave the comfort of familiar places to accomplish our purposes. The apostles declared the wonders of God to a group of strangers. Who is the stranger that you need to approach? That God is sending you to. Peter stood up to a hostile crowd and spoke the truth. Who do you need to speak truth to? Where do you need to take a stand for God? The apostles were pushed into the streets by God's powerful spirit. What is the step that you need to take next in response to the movement of the spirit? The wind of God is blowing. Let's catch it and share God's power with the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, gracious God, we just give you thanks and praise for the many blessings that you have given to us. 
We thank you, Lord, for the blessing of a new day. For today, the sun is shining. The birds were singing. The rabbits were playing. And we awoke. We give you thanks for the gift of another day. Because, Lord, we know that there are some that did not wake up this morning. And so, Lord, we ask that you would just comfort those that are mourning the loss of a loved one. May you comfort them. May you minister to them right now. Especially we ask that you comfort the family of Dee Davis with their loss. We pray, Lord, that you'd be with those that have lost a job, who've lost a home, who've lost a relationship. Lord, you have promised that you would comfort those that mourn. And we ask you now, O oh God, to comfort those that are mourning this morning. Wrap your loving arms around them. Let them know that they are not alone. Let them know that you are with them. That they are beloved of you. Lord, we pray also for those that are in the hospitals that are recovering from a surgery or a, a procedure, an accident. We ask you, Lord, that, to heal those that are sick and infirm. May you minister to them. May you strengthen their bodies, Lord. May you strengthen their minds and their spirits as well. We pray for those, Lord, that have mental sickness. We pray, Lord, that you would touch their minds and transform their minds and get them the help that they need, O oh God. For we know that it is a sickness, it is an illness, and it needs to be treated. And Lord, we also pray for those countries that are in conflict, that are in war, where people are dying. Children are becoming orphans. Women are becoming widows. Lord, we pray that you would bring peace upon this world on the earth right now. And now let us pray as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We'll continue to worship this morning through the giving of God's tithe and our offerings. If the ushers will prepare to come forward at this time. We'll continue to um, worship through that act of giving. And those of you who are online who are watching us today, we invite you also to participate in supporting the ministries here at Bradley United Methodist Church. There's a, a, a link in the comments section that you can click on that will take you to the giving page on our website where you too can participate in the offering this morning if you'd like to give. We appreciate that. Come for
Please stand. Thank you for all that you have given to us. Use these offerings we return to you to accomplish your ongoing renewal of your creation. Bless the labor of all who work the land and care for your resources. Bless the labor of our hands and minds as we engage in diverse ministries of teaching, healing, proclaiming, organizing, nurturing, feeding, counseling and befriending may all that we have both abilities and resources be used to serve you and our neighbor for the common good in the name of jesus christ who gives us his power and peace amen when i sing our concluding hymn number 465 holy spirit truth divine Kids ready to come down and help with the benediction? Okay. He's coming right now. Stand up. Stand up. We got to put our arms out. <laughs> you got the Holy Spirit on your head, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, let's do the benediction. Repeat after me. Beloveds of Bradley. Catch the, wind Catch the wind of God's Holy Spirit, of God's Holy Spirit. To, act boldly in the world. to act boldly in the world and to declare, and to declare the, wonders of God's loving grace. the wonders of God's loving grace. Amen. Amen. Awesome.
bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace. Amen.